Five Nights at Freddy's security breach is a fucking terrible and embarrassing mess. But I think I should be grateful that the quality of this game is nowhere near the equivalent of mobile games. Mobile games need no introduction. Some are memorable. Some are clearly made by sex pests and perverts. I'm so excited to see you in person. Where's the bleach? Where's the bleach? Where is it? Where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's the bleach? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Some of them, in fact all of them, are filled with the most ridiculous in-game purchases so your future children can spend on with your credit card. Some are featured on almost every fucking YouTube sponsor. Oh yeah, speaking of which... <clears throat> this video is sponsored by... Make sure legends, bitches! The list goes on. Now, FNAF Security Breach and mobile games have one thing in common. They're quite shit. But if you were to combine them somehow in a fucking, I don't know, cauldron or something, then the end result would be something far more worse. Something so confusing that it would destroy the planets in a millisecond. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. You've read the title. FNAF Mobile Games. If you go into Google Play Store or Apple Store, whatever device you're watching this video on, and search up Five Nights at Freddy's, you would find the official FNAF games, you know, Ultimate Custom Night, Pizza Simulator, etc, etc, etc. But if you continue scrolling down, you will find an almost endless amount of rip-offs, games that are clearly made by children and trend chasers that are trying miserably as they can to replicate the success of FNAF. It's almost the equivalent of crossing into Peckham Rye, a dodgy part of London full of dodgy people, or in this sort of comparison, dodgy FNAF ripoffs, that it just makes you want to run in the opposite direction and never look back. People think London is the best city in the world, huh? <coughs> Sorry, I got a bad throat at the moment. If you try and look at these games for yourself, although I really wouldn't recommend it if you don't want to waste time out of your life, you can tell that these games are not exactly the best quality. And you are right. Nearly all of these games are so weird, bottom line terrible. And that's what I intend to find today. As of writing the script for this video, I have found five terrible mobile games. In this video, one by one, I will be playing and reviewing these... very creative games. <laughs> fucking kill me. The five games I have found are as follows. Knights at Jurassic Island Survival, which is essentially a FNAF ripoff, but Jurassic World thrown all over it. Five Nights at Horror Games. Five Nights at Flopper, which is a Five Nights at Canis ripoff. I know it's a fan game and not an official FNAF game, but I think it still counts. Next up, probably the most creative title for a game ever. Two Nights at Jump Scare. I'm not joking. That is literally the title. From the looks of it, it appears to be a ripoff of the Joy of Creation Reborn demo. Right down to the colour of the text and the objectives. And finally, Animatronics Haunted Mansion. If you want to skip to any certain parts in the video that you're more interested in watching, then click the description page. Alright, this has been a very... Very fucking long intro, so let's begin. This game has a 46% amount of 5 star ratings. Does this game truly deserve ratings like these? No, it doesn't. If you like this game, then that's fine. I'm not trying to say you're wrong for liking it. But personally, I think whoever gave this game a 5-star rating has either never played a good game in their entire life, or they just simply gave it a 5-star rating just because the game has a similar title to FNAF. HELL! I wouldn't even classify this game as a FNAF game, because Knights at Jurassic Island Survival barely fucking resembles a FNAF game. Knights at Jurassic Island Survival doesn't seem to stick to a certain 
criteria of a double FNAF game, as I like to interpret it. What I mean here is this. The game does have doors for you to close to keep the killers away. The game does have cameras to spot where the killers are. And the game does have a Five Nights structure and time system. But what about the setting and the killers themselves? Eh, wrong. So the setting of the game is basically some B-Tech Jurassic Park Island. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And the story is... this. Something terrible happens and all the dinosaurs escape from the park on the island. The military has not arrived yet, but you must stay alive at all costs. Your main goal? To survive on a lost dinosaur island. So basically we're trapped on an island for five nights until the military saves us from the escaped dinosaurs trying to kill us. I highly doubt the military would take five fucking days to respond to a possibly major emergency such as dinosaurs escaping. But hey, this is a game about murderous dinosaurs. Who gives a shit about realism, am I right? The story in this game makes zero fucking sense. It's like the developer just pulled out a Scott Cawthon card and just threw in whatever came into his mind. There are so many unanswered questions here. Like, for example, where did the antagonist get the gun from? How does he or she view the security cameras or shut the doors? Because I don't see any fucking desk or control panel. I don't know. The story does not give two fucks. Piss off. Go touch grass. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm... Very critical when it comes to realism and story in a game or a TV show or a movie. And trust me, it was fucking dreadful for me to review these fucking games. <laughs> Why hasn't anyone fucking killed me yet? Anyway, what even is the point of having all of these FNAF aspects in the game? Literally, all you do in the game is just shoot at dinosaurs with a gun, with unlimited ammo, I might add. <laughs> So the doors and the cameras are pretty much useless. Well, actually, correction, they might not be fully useless because when you close the doors, the dinosaurs actually turn around, which is a pretty nice touch, by the way. But again, you're just constantly shooting dinosaurs each night, so they are useless nonetheless. And it's not like the story is explained in the game or anything. There's no fucking cutscenes between nights. It is literally just an immediate transition into the next night. That's not even a fucking 6am chime. <laughs> so the whole FNAF theming in the game is pretty much pointless and it could easily be removed with little to no change. The FNAF themes are clearly just to try and get this game appeal to more people because Five Nights at Freddy's is a very popular game franchise. Nights at Jurassic Island Survival is basically the equivalent of ordering a Hornby train model from eBay, and when the train model is delivered to your door, you hope to find a great quality train model to cherish, only to find that you just received the box and nothing else. So in conclusion, don't play Nights at Jurassic Island Survival. It doesn't deserve 5 star ratings, it's clearly made in a pathetic attempt to appeal to FNAF fans, and it's overall a really disappointing experience when you play it. Okay, I'm bored of this shitty game. Moving on. So unlike Nights at Jurassic Island Survival, Five Nights at Horror Games actually resembles a FNAF game. Now, when I started looking at the screenshots for the game on Google Play Store, I actually thought that I stumbled upon a good FNAF mobile game. But when I started reading the description of the game and started playing the game itself, my original thoughts about this game was immediately thrown out of the window. Just take a look and listen to this very embarrassing and poorly written description page. It's a grammar Nazi's worst nightmare. There's so much poorly written sentences and very confusing words such as waggy and haggy. Like, what? What the fuck does those two words even mean? The description page also describes one of the characters in the game, Granny, is described as a granny grandmother. That doesn't make sense. Why is she described as both a granny and a grandmother? Fucking hell, my brain. The story of the game is basically where we play as a nighttime security guard in the Haggy Lee Hospital, and we must survive against Granny, which, remember, is an evil granny grandmother. 
and Huggy Lee. There's no explanation why, we just have to survive against them. That's pretty much it. Now, if you thought the description page of this game and the story of the game was fucking terrible, just wait until you see the gameplay, because it is so much worse. So much worse, in fact, that it almost renders the game unplayable. To start off with, there's no phone guide tutorial in the game. You're essentially just left in the game feeling very confused because you don't know how the characters will work and what you're supposed to do to survive against them. And even when the game does show you tutorials, they last for only a fucking second. Ads are also a major problem with this game. They either block half of your view in the game or just constantly interrupts the game. I know this is a free-to-play mobile game and developers who make these kind of games have to at least make money from their games somehow. But if that's the case, why are you making your game free anyway? Is it really that hard to just set a price on your game? Apparently the people who made this game was Matt Kidden Studios and this was the only game they have ever made. If this is truly the case, then hopefully the developers will use this video in a way to help them make their future games better. So, Mark Kinnan Studios, if you're watching this video, your game is shit. With love, FNAF Fan Productions. Alright, next. I'm amazed at it. Best game ever made. I was on the verge of ending my life. I used to have six severe mental illnesses and was broke. After playing it just once, I won the lottery and got a wife. Made family and got rich. Heavily recommend it. <laughs> Man, I wonder how Christian Marchev is doing now. He's probably no doubt homeless again after he went on a spending spree with his lottery money and forgot to pay his rent. Anyways, unlike the many, many overall terrible FNAF mobile games out there, Five Nights at Flopper is... a little bit good? I mean, don't get me wrong, this game is shit. I definitely wouldn't recommend this game as a way to recover from six fucking mental illnesses. But believe it or not, there's actually a few pieces of good golden nuggets in this game. For example, there is actually a little bit of lore in this game. For once. I mean, the lore is definitely not the best, but at least the story of the game is not just Oh, survive against the killer cats or they'll kill you. But fuck the good bits in the game. We are only discussing why these games are so weird and terrible. Maybe I'll do a part two on good FNAF mobile games. You never know. Anyway, why is this game terrible? Well, to start off, I think calling Five Nights at Flopper scary is the equivalent of saying FNAF World is scary. Because Five Nights at Flopper isn't scary at all. And there seems to be a reoccurring problem with these games as we go further into this video. Now, despite what I said earlier that this game was good because it has lore, the game just instantly becomes bad again after that because the lore is not scary. At all. In fact, the lore doesn't even feel like it's a proper story. Remember with Nights at Jurassic Island Survival where I complained that the story of the game feels like the developer just threw in whatever came into his mind? Well, with Five Nights at Flopper, it's the same issue. I'll just play you a recording of the phone call so you can get an idea of what the shitty story feels like. We had an ordinary insurance company. Our business was going so-so. When suddenly, one ordinary day, a strange big cat came to us from the warehouse. We still have no idea how he got there. Over time, the cat became meaner for some reason. We couldn't kick him out, since he was making a huge profit for the company. Notice how the Texas Beach phone guy keeps saying, Oh, we had a cat in our building. We don't really know how he got there, and he just kept on getting more angry at people. We don't know why. Which, that's just a fancy way of the developer saying, I can't be fucked to explain why, because I don't know myself. And like icing on a cake, the jump scares are absolutely pathetic. <laughs> Uh. What? The jump scares in this game are just an example of the critical issues with jump scares. Face jumping out of nowhere with loud noise equals scary. If someone came up to my front door and told me, Hey mate, can you give me an example of shitty jump scares mate? 
I would just pull out my phone with Five Nights at Flopper on the screen and simply say in response, this is an example. So yeah, in conclusion, Five Nights at Flopper is not really good. It's 1% good, but it's 99% bad. The inclusion of lore is good, but the lore itself is bad, the jump scares are bad, and the quality of the game is bad. Alright, enough of this piece of trash. Next! Where to even begin? Now, if you thought the other FNAF mobile games we've encountered so far was bad enough, Two Nights at Jump Scare is... so much fucking worse. In fact, I didn't even want it to review this, because the game that I was actually intending to review was another game, made by the same developer of Two Nights at Jump Scare. Oh, sorry, I mean... Two Nights at Jump Scare. called Jump Scare of Creations, which was a game that I actually played when I was younger. In fact, if any of you are long-time veterans of this channel, you might even remember that I uploaded a video of me playing it. But of course, as you can see, I'm not reviewing Jump Scare of Creations. Maybe I got mixed up when I was looking at the screenshots for both Jump Scare of Creations and Two Nights at Jump Scare, I don't know. But I can't be fucked to go back and change the script and the voicing, so fuck it. We're reviewing Two Nights at Jump Scare. So... Jesus fucking Christ. This game is horrendous. So first of all, this game is probably a scam. If you take a look at the screenshots, don't be fooled by what you're seeing. Because what you're actually playing is this. Yep. What you're seeing here is absolutely real. Despite what the screenshots might suggest, what you're actually surviving against is not an animatronic, but Slenderman and... an orange clapped Patrick star. I mean, there is an animatronic in this game, but the character moves so fucking slow that it doesn't really seem much of a threat. <laughs> Almost everything in this game is completely misleading. In fact, fuck it, brace yourselves for this. This game is just a copy of Jump Scare of Creations. You know why? Here's why. I was replaying Jump Scare of Creations for... Nostalgic reasons. Don't ask. And it turns out, everything in Jump Scare of Creations and Two Nights at Jump Scare is the same exact fucking game. Each of these two games has the same fucking map and the same characters. Although with Two Nights at Jump Scare, it just has different screenshots and a different logo to make the game appear more different from Jump Scare of Creations. That is so fucking outrageous! It is not only very lazy in game developing, where you just reuse the same assets and map, but it is also downright disgusting. Especially since the developer is making money from ads on a game that is false advertised, which is against the law. I'm honestly not surprised that there has been no legal action taken against this game ever. Especially if you look at the current state of today's generation with scams and misleading mobile game ads. So in conclusion, Two Nights at Jump Scare is an absolute fucking mess. It's false advertised and the quality is god awful. Okay, I'm done complaining about this disgrace of a game. Next! Another day, another misleading game. Fuck yeah! So, like with Two Nights at Jump Scare, Animatronics Haunted Mansion. Wait, I mean, Animatronics. Awaken 3D is another misleading game. The screenshots from Google Play Store and the gameplay trailer has got nothing to do with this game. In the game itself, you are not surviving in a mansion. Instead, you're surviving in what looks like a rundown pizzeria, and you're not surviving against characters such as Springtrap, Withered Foxy, or... whatever the fuck that is. 
You are actually just surviving against two twisted animatronics that looks a lot like a FNAF OC a kid made when he was in his FNAF phase or something. <laughs> Although, if you look at the bullshit screenshots for the game on Google Play Store, you would see that the interaction icons from the screenshots are the exact same icons you see in the actual game. So maybe this game wasn't bullshit at one point and then the game got updated? But if that's really the case, then why are both the screenshots and the title on Google Play Store aren't changed? It's kind of important to change those two things if you're updating the entire style of a game. Especially when you're selling a game to millions of people. But hey, if the developer wants to be a scummy dickhead, then that's fine. Okay, enough ranting about this game being misleading. Is the actual game itself really good? No. Not one bit. The gameplay experience is quite pathetic. Your only objective in this game is to just survive. Unlike the Jaw of Creation Reborn demo and other survival games, you get no additional challenges or objectives, making the game incredibly boring as a result. I am a type of player that loves a tough challenge when playing games, and this game doesn't really fall under that category. The game is also not scary at all. All you get in this game is just a poorly made ambience on loop. Jump scares that have no sound. And... No lore or story. So in conclusion, Animatronic Haunted Mansion is terrible. It's misleading, boring, 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 boring. You'll just generally waste your whole life playing it. And with that, that concludes the review. So, what did we learn? Well, I think what we've learned is that FNAF mobile games are the reason why some people just shouldn't be allowed to go near any game developing software ever, especially the pricks that made these. If you are looking to waste time out of your life or wishing to cure your 12 fucking mental illnesses, then these games are for you. As disgusting as it seems that games like these continue to plague the app stores and not get the booty by Scott Cawthon, the thing is though is that bootlegs are kind of immortalised. No matter how hard you try, there will always be scummy dickheads out there who are looking to rip off media by any way they can. And bootlegs will always continue to plague the world. Especially in this fucking generation. <laughs>God damn, this video took fucking forever. I worked on this video for about a month or two, I think. I've actually lost count. The video failed to export. My editing software kept crashing. I ended up abandoning it at least once because I felt like this video was more ranting instead of criticism. I still do, but I haven't done videos like these in a while, so please give me a break. But here we are, it's done. Thank fucking Christ. This might be the last video of 2022. I mean, I do have another critical video in mind, but knowing how shit I am with promises, it seems very unlikely. I am going to be making a video similar to the what's to come for 2022 video. So if you're interested in what I have planned next year, then you should definitely check that out. Hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you next time. Bye.